on, sing that together.
that good God's been so good He's been just that good Oh God's been so good He's been just that good
Walking you as we're streaming live here, located at welcome here to the New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church as we're streaming live here at 3140 West 21st Avenue in the city of Gary, Indiana. Well, our pastor and watchman is the Reverend Owen C. Turner. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the shepherd of this house. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us, let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Because I was glad, saints, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We thank you so much that we help celebrate and reflect on what God did for us over 2,000 years ago by sending his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die for our sins and for him coming back again as conquering king and Lord of Lords. Let's give our God a hand clap of praise for what God has done and what he's going to do for his church. Amen. Again, it's so good to see your face in the place this Sunday morning. And we'd like to thank all those who have joined us today by Facebook Live and YouTube. We thank God for you. We thank God for your support and for allowing us to meet your spiritual needs this Sunday morning. So we ask that you hit your like, heart, comment, and share button. And we pray that you be encouraged and edified this Sunday morning as you move, as we move forward. That we help us to lift up the name of Jesus and praise the God of our salvation. So let's give our God a hand clap of praise as we start our worship service. Come on now, let's give God some praise in this place. Taking him, reflecting back on what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. If you believe God loves you so much and you love our Lord, clap your hands one more time. Amen for our God. This is our call to worship. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty. From. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he? This King of glory. The Lord. I said, who is this King of glory? The Lord almighty. He is the King of glory. And if you have made God the King of your life, let's give our God a hand clap of praise one more time as we worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. Come on now, let's give God some praise in this place today. We're going to ask our deacons to give a scripture and prayer following be our praise and worship. Let's praise the Lord today, saints. Amen. your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he breaks it and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same matter, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that you come not together until condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. May the Lord's best for the reader hears and doers of his word this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads. Our Father, our God, we come humbly bowed to thank you one more day for being God all by yourself. We know that you're God and you're Lord of Lords. And we just thank you for being so good to us, Father. Because you watched over us all week long. You protected us from hurt, harm, and all danger. And you brought us through to see another Sunday. The last first Sunday in the year, Father, we just thank you for it, Father. We ask that you would open up our hearts and our minds that we can continue to serve you till the end. Father, and we ask that you would bless those under the sound of my voice. Watch over them and keep them as you see fit. Touch the many, Heavenly Father, who are on their way. And there are many, Father, who would like to be here, but for unknown reasons, they're not here, Father. We ask your blessings upon them right now. We ask that you watch over the sick and shut in. We know there are many, multiplied by hundreds, multiplied by thousands, are in hospitals and convalescent homes. Many can't get well, Father, but we know that you're a doctor and you've never lost a patient. And we pray that your will be done. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us through another day. You brought us through, Father, not because we were good and kept your commandments, but you brought us through because of your mercy and your grace held us, Father.
Precious is the flows that make me white as snow. No, other bounds I know because it's nothing but the blood. It's nothing but the blood. It's nothing but the blood. It's that rock of working blood. <laughs> nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. We thank you for the blood in this place. It washed us cleaner than snow. You threw it in the lake. My sins are now forgiven. We thank you for the blood. Anybody thankful? Anybody grateful? And that's why we love you. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Yeah. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. You know it more than this. Can somebody just wave their hands in this place? You don't have to stand. But come on, worship with the Lord with me. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. Does anybody have a heart of love for the Father in this place? Come on, lift up your voice. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and Thank you for loving me. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. Oh, we give you glory. Yeah. Come on, lift up your voice and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Yes, yes, I love you, I love you, I love you more than anything, yeah. Come on, lift up your voice without the music, say, I love you, Jesus. We sound like a beautiful choir, come on. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. 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 Come on, somebody lift up your voice. One more time without the music. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Well, come on and lift up your voice and tell him how much you love him. Come on, with the fruit of your lips. Holla, come on, worship him right there. Come on, we don't need to sing a song. Come on, give him the fruits of your lips in this place. We worship you. Nobody great and nobody worthy of our worship. You deserve all the worship, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. More than anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody to say, I love you, Jesus. I love you. Somebody to say, I love you, Jesus. I love. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. Come on, somebody needs to just make that declaration. I love you, Jesus. Nobody get the worship. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. I just want to take the time to say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. You, Jesus. Somebody say, I love you. 
you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, just open up your mouth in this place. And let's surrender our hearts. Come on, make a place where God can dwell. No clapping, but opening up your mouth and tell him how much he means to you. Come on, everybody can worship him. Everybody can worship him. You don't need a song. You don't need a voice. But you got the breath in your body to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and worship him more than anything. Come on, worship him. You don't need the music. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, saturate this place with your worship. Come on, saturate this place with your worship. Come on, and saturate this place with your worship. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. Hallelujah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody like you in all the earth. Nobody greater than you in all the earth. Yeah. Oh. My soul says yes, yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, singing yes, Lord. <laughs> Completely yes. My soul says yes. Can you sing it with me? Come on, we sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. We're singing. And I'm going to say completely yes. Completely yes. Oh, my soul. My soul says yes. Without the music, come on. Singing yes, Lord. You say all night. Come on. Anybody want to say yes to the Lord? From the bottom of my heart. Bottom of my heart. To the depths of my very soul. I'm singing, we're singing, yes, Lord. Completely, yes, completely, yes. Oh, my soul. One more time with the music. Everybody lift up your voice. Say, we sing, yes, Lord. See, yes, Lord. Sometimes you need to go back and say yes to the Father. Bottom of my heart, make that declaration, the death of my soul. Oh, we're singing, yes, Lord. Completely, completely, yes. Oh, my soul, my soul says yes. Say, my soul. My soul says yes. Come on, anybody say yes to the Father. Yes, Lord. Come on up here, Geraldine, and pray. I asked you earlier. Come on. God has been good to us. Sometimes people pray for a miracle. I'm looking at miracles. A miracle, there are miracles that when they, let, when they let you get up this morning, that was a miracle. When they let you come to church, that was a miracle. Give me one of them old mama prayers. Because when mama prayed, we got breakthrough. Some of us are living on mama's prayers. 
Have mercy, Lord. Because he made us. Out of the dust, he made us. To worship him. All of our help comes from the Lord. If you need him today, and I know you do. You can't get along without him. We move and have our being. We can't get up. And we can't lay that. You have to trust in the Lord. Because he is the word. When he spoke, he, it came into being. So we thank him for sending his son. In this season of time, we worship him. His only begotten son, born in a manger, came down from earth, from heaven, to earth, to redeem man. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another day. It's the end of this year, and we're still here. We don't know. Why? Beverly, it is because of your goodness and your mercy that you have brought us thus far. We have been through sickness and trials all through the years. Two years of pandemic. Two years of COVID. But you blessed us one more time to come to you. So we lift up our hands to you, O oh Heavenly Father, to say thank you. Thank you one more day. Thank you for our early rising. Thank you for coming to church. You enable us to come to lift up our eyes to the hills. We can't do nothing without you, so we pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will continue to bless right now we have sick among us we have bereaved among us we have those who can't no place to stay nothing to eat but you're a God who can supply all of our needs so we're praying right now because you know we know that you're able to do all things but fail all you got to do is speak. When we call on your name, you don't have to be here. You can send your word because your word is God. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for your son to suffer and die on the cross just for us. So we worship him and give him the honor you didn't have to do it. But he took upon himself the sins of the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for salvation. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we can't thank you enough. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. So we praise you and adore you and Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would come into our midst. Come right now, oh, Heavenly Father, and let us feel your power. The power, oh, Heavenly Father, and the glory of you. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, for our pastor, 
anoint him and use him in your service as he speak your word. Telling men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So thank you for eternal life. Thank you, oh Heavenly Father. We just can't thank you enough. Bless everyone that is under the sound of my voice. Oh Heavenly Father, we come asking for your mercy. We come asking that you would just bless right now. You know every need and you can meet every need. Increase our faith, oh Heavenly Father, as we go on, as we go on telling others that Jesus Christ is the, oh Heavenly Father, the Savior. Oh Heavenly Father, he is the Christ. Have mercy, have mercy, oh Heavenly Father. We just can't thank you enough. So bless right now this service. Use each one of us. We lift our hands and we give you our hearts. We can't do nothing else but praise you. You said men must pray and not faint. So we pray right now that you would meet our requests. Meet our requests right now. In Jesus' name we pray. No other name but Jesus' name. No other name but Jesus' name. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The three, oh heavenly Father, one. And so we thank you. We thank you. And we praise you and we thank you. All night and all day, can we sing a little of that? All night, yes, Lord. All day, oh, the angels, yes, Lord, keep watching over me, my Lord. Yes, Lord. All night, yes, Lord. All day, yeah. sing it with us. Keep watching over me. Now, loosen up. We want a little praise. This is the last first Sunday. Somebody got a breakthrough. Ways were made. Maybe Damien sold a couple of houses. Somebody's son come out of jail. You went in the hospital and you come out. 
So you owe God a, a high praise. A high praise. Let's give him a little praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God here.
How many of you agree with them? That God shows you that he loves you. When someone shows you they love you, what do you do in return? Well, I guess that's the answer. Amen. Nothing. <laughs> Amen. We honor God for this experience to worship him, to gather together with other believers, to share in this experience. We thank God for keeping his part, even we we don't keep our part. We thank God for still being active, even when we are inactive. We thank God for being attentive even when we are tuned out. Amen. Some of us want God to bless us, but our minds have wandered off somewhere else. But how many of you know you're in worship? This is a sanctified time. This is a consecrated time space where we have dedicated this hour, this time to the Lord for what he has done to give his name praise we don't just worship him by lifting our hands we worship him by being obedient to what he has said and being obedient means that there are times where you ought to clap your hands because his word says in psalms 47 clap your hands oh ye people did it also say there are times you ought to shout it says shout unto god with the voice of triumph and then it says in Psalms 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him on the organ. Praise him on the drum. Praise him on the string instrument. Let everything that we just be in obedient. I don't know about you. To what the Lord has said. Hallelujah. So this is sanctified space. Sanctification is not a denomination. Amen. It is my state. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. And fire baptized. All because I got Jesus. If I got Jesus, I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And every once in a while, the Holy Ghost shows up. I know y'all ain't just, just y'all two Baptists. Amen. Do I at least got a three other sanctified folk? Sometimes a uh, Something begins to happen on the inside. Amen. I want to run when nobody's chasing. Tears come down my eyes. Nobody's bothering. My hand goes up all because I feel. I know some of y'all don't feel them. That's all right. But at least got five people in the house that sometimes say every night, I feel. Hallelujah. The fire burning in my soul. Oh, it's good. Amen. So, you know, I, I don't take advantage. I'm not talking about nobody, but I just figured since I came out here, I might as well just go on ahead and praise him. I could have stayed at home and watched. I could have been a spectator on Facebook. But the Bible said when you enter into his gates, you ought to enter with thanksgiving. When you enter into his courts, you ought to enter with a praise. So if I'm out of order with you, I'm in order with God. So if you see me jumping, if you see me clapping my hand, I'm in order. Hallelujah. An old song that said every time, I feel the spirit moving in my heart. I will praise. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I don't do no less, maybe more for God than I do for other things, Sister Mitchell. Sister Mitchell, I started putting up my Christmas decorations this week. Because guess what? I was in the Christmas spirit. So what I did, Deacon McGee, I turned on the OJ's holiday. Because I'm in the spirit, amen. And I started listening to the temptations. Amen. And I started putting up my tree. 
Have me a little Christmas special. Y'all get that at home. Started feeling good, amen. And I got in the Christmas spirit. So I act like I was in the spirit. And so therefore, when I get in the spirit of God, I act like. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. I know some of y'all think we've been in here long enough. Amen. Let me move on. I ain't trying to create nothing. It's already in. See, I'm trying to move on, but there's something going on on the inside. be a spectator. Y'all ain't gonna participate. Amen. So I don't mind y'all watching me. Amen. Because when you see me dance, just know God's good to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 37. Y'all don't get it. They got a commercial. They say, when you got a stain, just shout it out. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to shout it out. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Psalms 37. Some of y'all waiting for the benediction. I know y'all missed that. Amen. <laughs> you know, some people come to church waiting on the benediction. <laughs> Psalms 37, verses 23 and 24. I want to pluck out this pericope of scripture. A pericope is nothing but a part of the whole. It may sound like a big word, but that's all it means. It's a part of the whole. Amen. A pericope. Amen. It says right here in Psalms 37 from the New, Revi New Revised standard version of the bible it says our steps are made firm by the lord when he delights in our way though we stumble we shall not fall headlong for the lord holds us by the hand amen our steps are firm made firm by the lord when we delight in when he delights in our way Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by his hand. I want to talk about move in the right direction. Move in the right direction. Amen. Last week, we talked about readjust our focus. 
seeing that we are here at this cusp of a new year, the brink on the outset, right around the corner, amen, amen. of another year. So if we're going to be, if you will, successful, because success, remember, it's not a destination, it's a journey. If we're going to be successful, we have to readjust our focus. And once you readjust your focus, then, Felicia, you got to move in the right direction. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Now, we talked about that last week. Go back and look at that. Amen. Amen. And so I, I want to just tag this tale from this text on last week's message to know that it's a process. See, you can readjust, but then after you readjust, then you got to move. Amen, somebody. Because a lot of people can readjust their focus, but then they won't do nothing. They won't move. So today I want to talk about move in the right direction. As we enter into a new, you know, chronological year. Amen. Uh, chronos, not kairos. Kairos is God's time. Chronos is man's time. And all of us are governed by chronos. That means we're going to go into another year. Amen, somebody. So, th therefore, as we are at this space and as we have an outlook and a focus for our life, I readjust. Now it's time for me to move in the right direction. But when it comes to moving, Reverend Chambers, I, I understand, watch this, there is a sense of reluctance at times. Sometimes there is reservation when it comes to moving. Because we are unsure about the way we are moving. Y'all roll with me for a minute. Because primarily, we've never been that way before. Amen. Now, I've readjusted, and now it's time to move, but there is some type of trepidation, some fear that comes along with it uh, uh, because we have never been that way. We, we are accustomed to go in the way that we know. But when it comes to moving in another direction, which could be considered the right or the best direction, there is some reluctance. A couple of weeks ago, I was traveling to Alabama, but I had to stop in Knoxville first uh, because I left something in Knoxville when DJ had his first game. So I had to go back and get what was important to me. And so I'm glad they still had it. Amen. But I was going to leave Knoxville and go to Alabama. Bernie, this is my first time going to Alabama from Knoxville. Yes, Knoxville is in Tennessee, but I'm used to going to Nashville. Down 65. Amen. So now I had to go on 75. Amen, somebody. I haven't traveled 75, even though I, I got the directions, even though it's on my phone telling me to go. And, and the, but the truth of the matter, there was still a little reservation because I was not familiar with that way. I, I was not familiar going and I had to turn off to some other 59 and all these other little exits seemed like they're taking me through the back roads. And, and, and I was somewhat reluctant, even though I was following the direction. I wish somebody understood. Amen. Even though I was following what I could trust, I still had some type of reservation. Amen. So, because I never went that way before. Amen. And the only thing I'm trying to tell somebody is as you're moving through life, sometimes, yes, there will be some type of fear of some level of fear or reluctance because you're not accustomed to going that way. Before, amen, somebody. And so, therefore, I had to continue to think about the idea of chess. I, I like to play chess. I haven't played, but I learned while I was at the mill when we didn't have that much to do. And so, I learned to play chess. And so, in chess, some of you may have heard me say this, there are different moves that you have to make in order to play chess. But the key thing is, before you move, you got to think about your move. 
Because you got to think about, watch this, what the next person is going to do. Amen, somebody. So you got to kind of get in the person's mind based upon the spaces on the board. Amen, somebody. You got to say, if I do this, then they're going to do this. And if I do that, then they go. So you literally, I'm not that good, but you got to think at least three or four moves ahead. Because if you don't, then a piece, your piece will be taken off the board. And then that will make you more susceptible for your king to get in checkmate. Oh, I wish somebody understood. And I want you to understand that the object of chess is to ultimately get your king in checkmate. Get your king in a space or a place where it has nowhere to go. Amen, somebody. And so I want you to know that that's just like the enemy. Circumstances. Don't you all know that we're on the chessboard of life? And the enemy, watch this, your adversary wants to get you in a position, watch this, of checkmate. Checkmate in your marriage. Checkmate in your finances. Checkmate in your relationship, in your health, on your job, amen, with your children, whatever place. The enemy is trying to get you in a hopeless place. Watch this, because in chess, what you're trying to do while you're on the offense, you always got to also be on the defense. Because while you're trying to get them in check, they're trying to get you in check. So you got to make some moves. Amen, somebody. That will protect as well as put you in a position to win. Preach turn. Amen, somebody. But, but checkmate is a place of hopelessness. It, it makes you feel, if you ever played chess, anybody that know, uh, it's almost like checkers win. You know that move is going to, uh, they know that, oh my goodness, I done made the wrong move. They got me now. Amen. So it puts you like, oh, my goodness, when your king can't move. And has there anybody in the house ever been in a place where you felt hopeless? Where you felt like you can't move? You need to know that you're God's most valuable piece on the chessboard of life. I know some of y'all think y'all valuable because y'all look good. Because you got a lot of money. Because you got a nice car, nice house, nice job. But that's not why you're God's most valuable piece. Can I tell you why you're most God, God's most valuable piece? Because we're the only part of his creation where he blew into our nostrils and gave us the breath of life. He blew some of us in uh, him and us. We are the crown. All of us are the crown of God's creation. You need to believe that. Amen. That ought to give you some hope and some self-esteem that you're the crown of God's creation. So the enemy wants to put you in a place where you can't move. And so the scripture says today here that our, watch this, steps. And the King James Version said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But I want this version because I didn't want women to feel left out. Amen. But he's talking about mankind, all of us. The steps, they are ordered by the Lord. But let me pause right here for a minute to say to some of us that don't feel they need God. I'm all right by myself. And some of you say, no, Reverend, I showed up at church. I'm here today. I, I, I believe I need him. So if you believe God, why don't you obey him? Amen, somebody. <laughs> Why don't you do what he says? I, I just don't know how people that just joined the church think that their relationship is so firm and fixed. Amen, somebody. But you're not doing anything. You're not a part of any ministries. Not showing up at Bible study. Amen. Not showing up at Sunday school. How is your relationship good? Told you, Sister Shirley, I hear you. She's not here. But she like when I say, nobody likes a part-time lover but a cheater. Yeah. Amen. So that, that means you don't have to give that much attention to him. You don't have to do that much talking. You don't have to try to get to know him. Amen. You can just go and come as you please. I wish I had some real folk. 
And that's how some of us treat God. We go and come as we please, but I don't know about you. I don't feel like I do enough. I wish I knew I wasn't going to get too many amens. I don't feel like I'm in Bible study enough. I don't feel, yes, I'm the pastor. I come to Sunday school. Yes, I love Bible study. Yes, I go and try to hear something to draw me closer to God and to help me be a blessing to those who are under me. But what are we doing? So you may not say you don't need them, but you show you don't need them. Amen. Amen, somebody. I told you a couple of weeks ago I talked about a thankful lifestyle. Anybody can verbally express something. They sang it this morning. I love you, Jesus. But if you love him, you ought to get to know him. That's why sometimes I can't talk to y'all, but I got to talk to Paul. Paul in the third chapter of Philippians said, I want to know him. Lord, have mercy. I want to be in relationship with him. Paul was the one that set up churches throughout Asia. He said, I still want to know him. That's why I press. Keep on pressing toward the mark. Amen. For the prize of the high calling. Some of you have that idea because some of us don't understand that just because we are moving doesn't mean we're moving. I told you that success is a journey. Some of us think that because we're moving, we, that doesn't mean you're moving. And I use this example to submit you. I, I thought about there are times when I went to an amusement park. And I got on a particular ride. Sometimes after I got off the ride, I realized I exited where I entered. Y'all will get that when y'all get home. Amen. I moved, but I really didn't go nowhere. And sometimes your entrance is your exit. You're moving, but you're not going anywhere because watch this where I got off is where I went in Lord somebody missing what I'm saying I moved but I did not come here children of Israel they'll testify y'all for y'all they said we were moving and we went around that mountain for 40 years but we never went anywhere I wish I had somebody to understand. And there's somebody that said I got the job making more money but I'm still broke I move, but I ain't go nowhere because <laughs> I was broke before I was making this money and I got the job and I'm still broke. I wish somebody understand. You were miserable, lonely, and irritable when you were single. Then you got a marriage. Then you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you still Lonely, miserable, and I wish somebody understood. So you moved, but you ain't went nowhere. Well, the Bible says, y'all can go down the list of other things. I just thought I'd throw out a few so y'all to get my point. Amen. The Bible said there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. And I realize, yes, I've made some bad decisions, made some mistakes. People will talk about it. It doesn't matter. Amen. Because guess what? It happened. I can't do nothing about it. But guess what? I don't have to keep on making the same mistakes. See, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to just move but not go in any way. Amen, somebody. And so, therefore, I want to urge you as you go into this next season of your life, let the Lord be your guide. You need to learn that I'm moving in the right direction. So I thought I would ask David, who wrote this psalm. This was a psalm that continues to focus. If y'all don't mind, give me 15 more minutes. Maybe not even that long. An age-old question. Why do the righteous suffer? And it seems like those who are unrighteous prosper in their way. There are two other songs I wish y'all understood like me. Amen. That's why some people drop out of the church because they feel like the righteous should not suffer. It's two other psalms that continue in this same vein, that have this same idea. You go and read it. Psalm 73. Y'all remember Asaph said, he said, my foot almost slipped. 
when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Psalms 49, go home and read those two. But we're going to focus here on what David is writing, uh, uh, this age-old problem. Lord, I'm coming to church. I'm paying my tithes. I'm going to choir rehearsal. I'm a deacon. But why do I have to suffer? Maybe he had a conversation with Job. Maybe he was reading what Job wrote. I don't know. But this is an age-old question, and this is the backdrop. This is the foundation in which this psalm is built upon. But David was not concerned from the, pros uh, the, 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 the uh, perspective of money. He was saying, why is it that seemingly my enemy seemingly is always doing better than me? Living lies, amen, somebody. Going through seeming like they don't have no issues, no problems, seem like. But then he started talking about, y'all go home and read all the verses before. But then I got right here to verse number 23, amen. Then it says, our steps are made firm by the Lord, amen, somebody. And so if you're going to move in the right direction, the first thing I want to tell you is this. You have to prepare prefer God's prepared path. Watch this. You got to prefer God's prepared path. I'm almost done already. Amen. I remember when I ran cross country and, and, and specifically cross country because we didn't have to run around a track, but we had to run in different areas. And before we got there, before the runners got there, there was already a path marked out for us to run. Y'all roll with me. Amen. It was all I didn't have to make my own way. We didn't have to make up a way to run. There was already a prescribed way to run. Amen. Somebody. And guess what? The runners could have went any way they wanted to. I'm almost through, Tony. Amen. They, Sister Lynette, they could have went any way they wanted to. But guess what, Sister Mitchell? They'll be disqualified. I wish somebody roll with me. Amen. You can go whatever way you want to. You can run whatever way you want to. You prepare for the race. Watch this. You're running their ways, but then you're going to go your own way when they already have prepared the path for you and just to find yourself disqualified. But you got to learn, watch this, to prefer. That word is very key. You got to prefer. I don't want nothing else. There's sometimes that I would prefer fried chicken over baked chicken. That's my preference, amen. And I don't know about you, but I just gave you that way. I've gone my own way. I've tried my own thing. But now I've reached a place in my life where I want to trust in the Lord with all my heart and stop leaning to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your... Now, you got to believe it, amen, somebody. God will direct your path. He directs you when you hear a word from one of his representatives. You, he directs you when you read the word. He directs you when the Bible says the word of God is a lamp unto my feet. And it is a light unto my pathway. That's why we encourage you not just to come on Sunday morning, but to Bible study, Sunday school, mission meeting. Because every time you show up, you're going to hear God's prepared path. Oh, Lord, I wish I, I heard Sister Mitchell teaching yesterday. If you would have been at mission meeting, you would have heard God's prepared Amen, somebody. Because the Bible says that there are. A man in his heart plans his own ways. But the Lord orders, that word order in the Hebrew means prepares his step. And you have to learn how to trust God's preparation. Oh, Lord, I feel like preaching. Amen. You got to learn how to trust God's preparation. I know you trusted everybody else just so they can lead you down to failure lane. Amen, somebody. But how many of you know that the Lord will always guide you to where you need to be? Even when, watch this, you find yourself going through the valley of the shadow of death, it does not matter because God is with you. He's guiding me along his path. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to learn how to trust God's preparation. He's already mapped it out. Amen, somebody. 
In other words, like that old song, you shouldn't spend your time trying to figure it out. Why, God, <laughs> I already worked it out. I know you got to learn, Sister Lynette, how to walk by faith and not by sight. The more I learn to trust him, the more he can trust me with. Amen, somebody. And I'm glad that I'm learning how to trust God because I prefer his prepared path. And the next thing you got to understand is that once you prefer God's prepared path, then your faith grants you favor. Oh, I wish somebody ought to get excited. Amen. Your faith grants you favor because it says right there, it, it said you ought to watch this. He finds delight in our way. Y'all roll with me. Amen. He delights in our way because we prefer his path. Oh, Lord, I wish somebody understand. Because I preferred him, then God delights in the way that I'm taking. And because I'm taking his way, my faith, Watch this, grants me faith. Because watch this, the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing. The God can't increase our faith if we ain't got no word. You can't pray for your faith, amen. You can't sing your faith, but you got to trust the word of God. That's why I'm telling you, you ought to prefer his prepared path because when you prefer his path, your faith in his path grants you faith. Somebody don't understand that favor is what you ain't work for. Favor is what you don't deserve. That's why the Bible teaches us about grace. Grace is the unmerited favor. I feel like preaching out of the Lord. And maybe some of y'all ain't never had favor on your life. Well, let me remind you, because you're sitting here today, it's a time, a testimony that favor is on your life. Because the truth of the matter is, you should have been dead. You should have lost your mind after some of the stuff that you lost. After some of the friends that just walked away, not knowing why they walked away. After stuff broke down on you. After your body was breaking down and you're still here. Oh, y'all don't want to testify. I went to see Sister Derby yesterday. Amen. That's my second or third time seeing her. And when I walked in her house, amen, I looked at her face. I, Sister Derby watching me now. She going to get happy in her chair. Amen. I declare she is because when I looked at her face, I said, wait a minute. Is this the same woman that I saw a few weeks ago? I said, Sister Derby, wait a minute. You are looking good. Then I read a scripture. I reminded her, Deacon Hill, of a scripture when I saw her, how restored she looked. The same woman that suffered some strokes. The same woman that had heart attacks. I saw her face and I couldn't help but think about Shadrach. I feel like preaching. Meshach. And Abednego, amen, somebody. I thought about the part, not when they didn't bow down, but I thought about the part, Sister Mac, when they were thrown in the fire. And the king looks said, wait a minute, didn't I throw three men in the fire? But they are loose and walking around, and there's another man walking with them, and one looks like the son of God. And I kept on reading, uh, Sister Derby, and the Bible said they came out of the fire, and it said when they came out. They look like they never went in. And so I told Sister Derby, the only thing I'm saying, I know you've been in the fight. But you look like you've never been in it. There's somebody in the house uh, that know I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like what I'm going through. Only if you know my story. So my faith, it granted me favor. Amen, somebody. I'm on my way out of here. Amen. And there are times when I feel like giving up. Uh, the Bible says it right here. Come on, Tano. I'm ready to ride. Amen. The Bible says, uh, it said, though we stumble, uh, we shall not fall headlong. Uh, it said, for the Lord holds uh, us up with his right hand. Uh, and the last thing I want to tell you uh, is that you may stumble, uh, but thank God I'm still stable. Uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that know you almost fallen? Uh, there were times when I'm walking around the house uh, and sometimes I trip over my feet uh, and I'm almost going to fall. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I did not fall. Uh, but I kept 
catch myself. And is there anybody in the house who know that I'm glad that even when I stumble, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still stable. All because the Lord, he catches me. Say yes, I'm reminded of the benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Say yeah. If you know God has kept you from falling, ain't he all right? I'm moving in the right direction. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. I know it's unfamiliar territory, but keep on trusting in the Lord and God. God will lead you. He will guide you along the way. Ain't he all right? Yes, he is. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm reminded of Jesus. He was led to a hill called Calvary. Didn't he do it? He didn't want to go. They nailed his hand. They nailed his feet. They hung him high throughout them, Lord. He died. Didn't he die? Yeah. For your sins and mine. But I'm so glad they took him down off that tomb. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All because he was moving in the right direction. The storms may rise, the winds may blow. But how many of you know I'm sold out for the Lord? Yeah. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. Yeah. I'm moving. I'm moving. The right direction. Grace and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. After you readjust, now it's time for you to move. I don't care what's happening in the world. I don't care what you see. See, this is about trust. And see, you have to learn how to trust God. You can't trust what's happening in the world. Sometime now, you're talking about this variant. Getting to us in another way. All in the frenzy. Amen. You can't trust them. Tell you to take the vaccine. We know it's not a cure, but some people think it's a cure. The way sometimes they promote it. But then people start dying from the vaccine. Amen, somebody. Now they got this new variant acting like, hey, they're acting like the flu ain't got a variant. Acting like chicken pox ain't got a variant. I wish somebody under. There are always a mutation. When I understand. That's why shingles is a derivative of a chicken pox. Lord have mercy. There's always going to be something that comes from it. So you can't trust in the system. But how many of you know I'm going to trust in the Lord? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Keep on trusting. It's not about how much material possessions you acquire in this world. How many of you want the peace of God? Which passes all understanding. See, I thought the right path was material possessions. Thought the right path was who I was connected to. And it was, just not people. But God says if you find favor with him and man, he'll bless you through people. I wish I had time, Sister Wilson, to testify. I'll take your comment. I'm not bragging. I'm just rejoicing. Because you don't know like I know. Where I've been, what I've been through. I wish I could tell you, but I'm standing here today as a mark of favor. But I'm glad. I'm glad I got favor on my life. All because I was moving in God's direction. Yeah! Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your prepared path. 
and I prefer your path. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God. Sometimes, yes, it's fearful. Sometimes we become lazy and comfortable in the spaces that we are. We know we need to readjust our focus. Some of us have thought about it, but we haven't made a move. We pray for that spirit of fear to vanish and disseminate in our life. Because you told us you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. And all we have to do is trust your direction, even when we don't understand it, even if we've never been that way before. We pray for that spirit of boldness, trust to rise up in those who hear my voice, who is just lack, lagging along, been lackadaisical, lethargic. We pray for that spirit of increase to manifest in their mind and in their heart. Touch right now, oh God, that from this forth, we'll never be the same. Because we're going to move in your direction. That's the right direction. Your preferred path for our life. Touch those who haven't even considered you. Maybe after hearing this message, they'll consider you, oh God. They'll get on the right path. They'll make the right move. We've tried money, cars, women, drugs, alcohol. None of that, that does anything but temporary. But when we connect with you, there's a lasting joy. There's a lasting peace. Even when it's storming outside, I got peace on the inside. Moved by your power and your spirit. We pray, Father, for increasing our spirits on today. Increase our capacity for you as we open ourselves to you and we make ourselves available to you. We ask, oh God, for a spirit of reception that they'll receive your word so that we may grow in your grace and knowledge. Thank you, O oh God, for a word that challenges us, a word that motivates us to move. We thank you. There's someone that's listening to me in radio by way of Facebook or however they may hear, O oh God, we pray that they are touched to desire a relationship with you. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank God for a word that challenges us. To those who are in Facebook, we pray. Something was said. This is the first Sunday. We pray if you don't have a church home. We pray if you are not connected with the church. As you enter into another season in your life, as you enter into Kronos, man's time, don't let this year end without you being connected to the Lord. In some form or whether, get yourself a church where you can grow. Go to a church where you can grow. Develop. Be all that God wants you to be. Not just sit on the bench, but become active in the ministry. Because God has given all of us gifts and orders that the house may be satisfied with what it needs. You want to join this family of faith? Call our church at 219. 949-2225 email us send us comments on Facebook or however you can contact us stop by the church we'll be glad to have you there's someone in this house and we'll go into communion the Lord is calling you let's stand everyone the Lord is calling you to be in relationship at this church to grow and develop we extend this invitation we can't force you to come all we can do is extend an invitation. If the Lord is moving and sharing. Amen. The Lord is calling you to this space and place. Amen. 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 Another one. Amen. If the Lord is calling you. The Lord is saying, today you hear my voice. Hard not your heart. Do we have another one? Sing that. I'm available to you. Is there anybody else that say, Lord, here I am? Man, woman, boy, or girl.
Come unto me, all ye that labor. You can fill me up. Now I'm free. I just want to be more available. We'll do this. Keep those names. We got Facebook as well. We'll do that later. Yeah, we got it. Y'all may be seated. Deacons, let's prepare the table. I don't want to keep those who are watching. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and breaked it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shared for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sang hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I've read you Matthew 26, 26 through 30. Shall we pray, God, we thank you, we love you, we appreciate you. God, we thank you for assembling us on here the last first Sunday of the year. We're truly grateful. We thank you for being able to come to the table one more time to remember the sacrifices the blood that you shed and as we partake in this we ask that you would bless us in Jesus name and every heart say amen, amen. amen. To the heart. You know it's singing with us. Yeah. Hey. 
its power. Preachers, y'all come down.
As Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, where he instituted the Lord's Supper, we're reminded as 1 Corinthians 11 chapter tells us, as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. We're showing the Lord's death till he come as a reminder to all believers that the freedom of salvation did not come at a cost that we had to pay but came at a cost that Jesus had to pay. So therefore, because all of us who partake have entered into fellowship with Jesus, because we're in fellowship with Jesus, we're in fellowship with one another. Therefore, let us eat together. And so let us drink. As we await the second coming, the second advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank God for those who tuned in with us by way of Facebook or YouTube. We pray something was said to challenge you to change and motivate you to move. Thank you for allowing us to be your spiritual entity this hour. Amen. Where you can grow in God. We pray something was said to encourage you, strengthen you this isn't coming week. We want you to contact our church if you have any questions, comments, or you want to be a part. And remember, we thank you for all the gifts that some of you give. Thank you for blessing us with the substance of your increase. And remember, don't let the day make the difference in you. But you make the difference in the day. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. God bless you and God keep you. Clerk will come.